Hello everybody and today I'm going to show you the inside contents of the Remedia publication dictionary skills and this is geared towards grade four through eight. Now of course you know that you can use this for whatever age bracket you would like but those of you who are looking for something on grade level and you like to know these things that's why I like to tell you. So one thing that I really feel that every child should know how to do and do very well is be able to use a dictionary, thesaurus, all those good things because basically it's becoming something that is ancient history that should not be. We rely too much in, on uh, the convenience of electronics and then as soon as something happens, we do, we kind of, lose our calm because we have just become too uh, adjusted to just using everything electronically. Now, with that being said, yes, I do use electronics with my job, with my homeschool. I'm not against them, but I just really think that we need to use some traditional things as well. And that's why we kind of going back to the beginning, even though we use a regular dictionary. But this I thought this was nice because it's geared specifically towards dictionary skills, which is which is really an art. And it actually helps with so many different things. So let's go ahead and look inside of it. This is the ebook PDF version. So this is the contents that's really going to be going over throughout this whole book. Um, you're going to work with alphabetical order, syllables, compound words, guide words, respelling, accents, parts of speech, definitions, multiple meanings, homophone, synonyms, slang, abbreviations, pronouns, people, pictures, words, meaning, animals, and then you have a pre slash post test, and then the answer key is in the back. So basically, it starts off like this is kind of giving your child. Um, to explain to your child about dictionary. What I like about this, if you have older children, they can pretty much take this and do it on their own. If you have a younger child, you can sit down and explain this to them, but you can use it either way. If you have older children that help your younger children, they can actually teach this along with teaching themselves at the exact same time. So it's a very good way to combine your different various ages and grade levels together on one harmonious thing that they both need. And it's not too overdone. So it goes to through and just give a basic definition of um, what a dic dictionary is. Now, the reason why I particularly like this, because if you have a child with a learning difference, especially dyslexia or with writing, dyscalculia, this is this will kind of ease up the overstimulating of too much writing for them. Um, because it becomes very, very stressful. But also, if you have a child that is a reluctant reader or if you have a child that um, that gets stressed out with a whole lot of reading or have dyslexia, the font is very, very friendly to the eye. And it also is large enough, so you're not straining your eye to look at the information. What I, And also what I like is how it actually is going to help them read better because it's actually break down the words and show you how how the word look in real time if you see my cursor. And then it also shows you how it sounds when said. And we know with the English language, sometimes the way a word is spelled is not necessarily the way it sounds when you pronounce it. So your child be able to see those variations. So each lesson has a little bit something different that you do with it. Some you will be actually breaking these words down in syllables, some you'll be putting in alphabetical order, some that you'll be doing exactly what they tell you to do, look them up, look up the definitions. So it's different ways in which you're going to be working with these same words. Of course you can build on this and make additional assignments. I would like to build on this and have them actually use all of these words in a funny poem or a story or you know it's so many different things you can do uh, a raps a rap song of rhyming um, really building in those poetry skills. There's so many different things that you can actually do to build on this. So just don't look at these words like, oh, these are too easy for my child. Um, if, it, if it is, you can easily build on this and it gradually progresses and, get, and gets harder as you go through the book. Another thing that I like about this book is that it's not too long. As you can see, it's 31 pages long. Uh, 
it will give your child a sense of accomplishment when they complete a book on anything. So if it's not too overdone, too long, you will notice that they will be able to just grab it, don't feel stressed, and they'll go ahead and work through the book. Children with um, without learning differences and also children with learning differences. My son really loves this for the simple fact of it's not too thick. And that can become very overwhelming when you have a child with learning differences. And even a child that doesn't have it, who wants to have a book that's 700, 8,000, oh, not 8,000, 700 pages, 1,000 pages, and you're expected to finish that one book in that one topic or subject, and then you have seven more subjects to go that is the pages the page numbers are equally as large or a little bit less just think about how many pages that is so if your math book has like 700 pages then your math, your language arts has about 700 pages that's 1400 pages between both topics that's not including history science geography art that's a lot, even for a gifted and talented child. But just think about the stress that, that entails when it's actually a child with a learning difference. So um, I never really thought about all that until my son actually broke that down to me. And I was like, you know what? That don't make any sense. That is like way, way too much. That stressed me out when I thought of it like in that. So that's why I kind of like real really working on readjusting because it's not so much about how many pages you cover because you can cover the whole book, but have your child learn something, you know, because we can get into the little thing of getting all the numbers right and paperwork and they, you know, they don't really hold on to the information. How I like this is because it's some good information. You can focus and hone in on it. They're learning. It's not overdone. And it's right straight to the point. So here you're going to be working with compound words. It explains all of that. This will double over as your reading and your spelling. They even transition to some things dealing with animals. And then it talks about guide words. And you can use any dictionary that you personally own. I am using a hand dictionary. And I'm also going to use, let my children use Google. Um, um, with the digital dictionary. So I'm going to use both because I really feel in this techno age, your children need to need, know how to do both. You need to know how to do it digitally and you also need to know how to do it manually. But nowadays we have no trouble with doing everything um, digitally, but we run into a problem when it's manual. So we're doing both. So I just want to show you a little bit of how this book looks, how the format goes, and everything like that. And I hope I'm not going too fast. So here we have definitions. You're going to be working with sentences. What I particularly like is that you're going to be doing different things with different – it's not just dictionary, look up the words. It's dictionary um, skills, look up the word, look at the part of speech, even identifying that, hey, it's more than one definition for the word duck. And it's going to go through various different things. And so you're going to be touching that when you go into the um, physical dictionary. And also, if you're using a digital dictionary, you're going to notice those changes, those variations. And so it's building all type of skills that can be transitioned from the dictionary skills to, the, to your thesaurus and also gradually progress into just their textbook, their table of contents, what's in their reference book part of their uh textbook that they're using. It'll cause them to be more alert to what's going on and stuff like that. So I really, really like it. And it's going to be getting into homophones and all that good stuff like that. So I'm not going to show you the entire book, but I did show you halfway and because I wanted you to get a good idea of what this book entails. Like I said, they have a whole lot of different ones. They even have writing, language, art, science, history. They have every topic that you need for homeschooling. They have it covered with this particular company. Another thing that I like is that when you buy the ebook, um, if you have a printer, it, if you have multiple children, it's very, very, very good for you because you don't have to worry about um, having one book and have to make all the copies. The only thing you have to do is go to your computer or your phone, however you download it, and just print it out. Another thing with the ebooks, they run different little sales on it. So sometimes you can get the ebook splice or slice, not splice, slice. 
S L I C E, which is um, they call a chapter slice, which means you're just getting a, a chapter of one of the books that's on a topic that you will like. So I, I bought a, a chapter slice of how to learn to drive. Um, cause my daughter is about, about to turn 15 soon and she really want to drive. And so I'm, I'm incorporating that in her homeschool. And so we got, <clears throat> so we have that chapter. And so we're going to just peruse in that. And I ended up going back, but that chapter only cost me a dollar and 99 cent. So it's very, very user friendly and price point wise, amazing. And you can use it multiple times because you bought it. Um, just like we're using U.S. government and some other things from the ebook perspective because it was cheaper. Sometimes you pay a little bit more when you're getting a hand copy versus an ebook copy. So you need to just weigh your options, what best works for your homeschool. If you have a printer that does a lot of different prints, like a laser printer, I would suggest you get as many ebook copies as possible because. It just makes more economical sense in the long run instead of just getting a whole lot of book copies and then you got to turn around and um, make the prints, you know, spending time. You can still do it if you got a laser printer, but who want to just make prints or set at a printer and copy page by page by page from a hand copy? In Sorry for that. Missed and matched my own video. <laughs> but anyway, I just wanted to just tell you that um, I'm going to be doing a whole lot more videos and reviews trying to let you guys see before you buy. So I hope you enjoy this video. You guys have a great rest of your day. Bye. Oh, and if you have not yet subscribed to my YouTube channel, please go ahead and click, click that subscribe button. And also... If you have not liked this video, go ahead and like it and make sure to comment below and say hello. <laughs> and also make sure to follow me on all three social media platforms that I am actively on, which is Instagram, Facebook, and here on YouTube. I will talk to you guys later. Have a great rest of your day. Bye.